Everybody knows the story of the seven rainbow goblins, the terrible end they came to, and the way the flowers saved the rainbow at the last minute from being destroyed. But very few know what happened afterwards. The rainbow shone in the sky more beautiful than ever. Birds and beetles, butterflies and insects excelled one another in coloured splendour. Animals observe their new flying friends with wonder and pleasure. The rainbow had established a unity between heaven and earth.
Only one strange little creature disturbed this harmony as he watched the colorful scene with the keenest interest. There was whispering. What's he up to? What's he brooding about so fiercely in the midst of this joy? Who is he? Suddenly a voice cried out.
lived alone in crevasses in the eternal ice and snow was his only nourishment.
Now he was determined to set his plan in motion. He tore himself away from the ecstasy of colors and betook himself to the deepest cleft in the rocks with a concealed entrance to the middle of the earth. There, he descended into the cave city. Where the cave goblins lived in harmony and peace. They had never ventured up the surface of the earth, who had never seen the light of day. Their eyelids were closed, and their life was a happy one.
began to tell them about the world. He spoke of plants and animals. He described nature in all its colors and helped them to imagine how wonderful these tasted. They could become rich, unimaginably rich in colors. And this nourishment awaited them if only they would decide finally to leave their night world. This made them curious and they began to open their eyes. They didn't want to live in darkness anymore. They wanted to go up out of the womb of the earth. And so, the White Goblin led the impatient band of goblins into the light of day. There, the whole of nature lay before them, with all its precious colors, nourishment in abundance for the starving cave goblins. It was a feast that looked as if it would never end. Everything was available to them without effort. Their joy gave them new energy, and they quickly multiplied. They soon became a busy people, building great cities, and conducting brisk trade in the colors they extracted from nature. They were engulfed by the Their cities became gigantic.
But nature increasingly lost its colors, and signs of illness were evident in many places. This did not disturb the goblins at all. On the contrary, it was a challenge to them to invent tools that could provide them with more colors. And they built machines that would advance them more swiftly in the earth, water, and air.
Although the cave goblins had sucked all the colors out of nature, their thirst seemed unquenchable. Now they built huge plants in order to produce artificial colors. Smoke poured out of the factory chimneys and darkened the sky. Sun was no longer able to penetrate the smoke that was always dust. Corrosive vapors lay over the land. The air became stuffy.
part of the cold, cold world. He sometimes had wild nightmares, in which the destructive greed of the cave goblins grew beyond measure. Only a very few who managed to save themselves and now hover between life and death, agreed on the essentials of being, their life, and the life of their people, unroll before their eyes again. And suddenly, they understood the connections.